Yellowstone National Park, a place of serene beauty, geysers erupt, bison roam. But beneath this tranquility lies a slumbering giant, a supervolcano, its power is almost unimaginable, capable of eruptions thousands of times larger than Mount St. Helens. Yellowstone's last super eruption occurred 640,000 years ago. It ejected over 240 cubic miles of volcanic material. Ash blanketed much of North America. The climate changed globally. Such an event today would be catastrophic. Scientists monitor Yellowstone closely. They look for signs of reawakening. One alarming indicator is the rising ground. The center of the park has been steadily rising for decades. This suggests a buildup of magma beneath the surface. But is an eruption imminent? The answer is complex. It requires a deep dive into Yellowstone's history. We must understand the forces at play, and we must listen carefully to the whispers of the Earth. The ground at Yellowstone is restless. It rises and falls like a slow, deep breath. Since the 1920s, scientists have tracked this movement. Using sensitive instruments, they measure even the slightest changes. The data reveals a startling trend. The center of Yellowstone has risen over three feet in the past century. This uplift is not steady. It comes in bursts, followed by periods of subsidence. Imagine a giant balloon inflating and deflating beneath the surface. This is the power of the Earth's internal heat. What causes this dramatic swelling? The leading theory points to magma. Molten rock deep within the Earth is pushing upward. It pools in vast chambers beneath the park. This accumulation of magma puts pressure on the overlying crust, causing the ground to bulge. But magma is not the only player. Water also plays a crucial role. Yellowstone is a geothermal wonderland. Superheated water circulates through underground fractures. Changes in water pressure can also contribute to ground deformation. Understanding this complex interplay is key to deciphering Yellowstone's behavior. To understand Yellowstone's future we must look to its past, and what a past it is. Yellowstone has experienced three cataclysmic eruptions in the last 2.1 million years. Each eruption reshaped the landscape, each left an indelible mark on Earth's history. The first eruption 2.1 million years ago was the largest. It ejected over 579 cubic miles of volcanic material. The second, 1.3 million years ago, was smaller but still devastating. The most recent, 640,000 years ago, created the Yellowstone caldera we see today. A massive crater, 30 by 45 miles across. These eruptions were not isolated events. They are part of a cycle, a cycle driven by the movement of the Earth's tectonic plates. As the North American plate moves southwest, it interacts with a hotspot in the Earth's mantle. This hotspot feeds the Yellowstone supervolcano. The evidence of Yellowstone's fiery past is everywhere, from the vast lava flows to the layers of ash that blanket the region. By studying these remnants, scientists piece together a timeline of eruptions. Each eruption provides a clue, a clue to the timing and magnitude of future events. So how does Yellowstone's current activity compare to its past? Is the recent ground uplift a sign of an impending eruption? The answer, as with most things geological, is complex. There are similarities and differences that make predicting the future a difficult task. The current rate of ground uplift is concerning. It's faster than anything observed in the past century. However, it's still within the realm of what scientists consider normal for Yellowstone. Remember, this is a dynamic system. It's constantly changing. The composition of the magma beneath Yellowstone is also crucial. Current data suggests that the magma chamber is not yet fully recharged. A super eruption requires a vast reservoir of molten rock, the kind of reservoir that takes millennia to build. While the threat of an imminent super eruption is low, smaller eruptions are more likely. Yellowstone has experienced numerous smaller eruptions between the cataclysmic ones. These events can still be destructive but they are far less devastating than a full-blown super eruption. To understand Yellowstone's behavior, imagine a pressure cooker. Magma deep underground is like the water. Heated by the Earth's core, it expands and generates tremendous pressure. The Earth's crust acts as the lid, holding this pressure in check. Interestingly, the crust is not a single, solid piece. It's broken into massive plates that constantly move and interact. These movements can cause stress to build up along the edges of the plates. Fault lines, like those that crisscross Yellowstone, are weak points in the crust. As magma rises and pressure increases, it pushes against the overlying crust. This can cause the ground to bulge upward, as we see at Yellowstone. 
If the pressure exceeds the strength of the crust, the lid can burst open resulting in an eruption. However, the system is not static. Magma can cool and solidify relieving pressure. Water heated by the magma can escape through geysers and hot springs, further reducing pressure. It's a delicate dance between forces, a dance that has been ongoing for millions of years. Scientists are not passive observers of Yellowstone's activity. They employ an array of sophisticated instruments to monitor the sleeping giant. These instruments act like stethoscopes, listening to the Earth's heartbeat and detecting subtle changes that might signal an impending eruption. Seismometers deployed across the park track earthquakes. These tremors, often too small to be felt by humans, can indicate magma movement underground. GPS stations, using satellite technology, measure ground deformation with millimeter precision, revealing patterns of uplift and subsidence. Gas emissions from geysers and fumaroles are also closely analyzed. Changes in the composition and volume of gases like sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide can provide clues about the temperature and pressure of the magma below. By combining data from these various sources, scientists create a comprehensive picture of Yellowstone's internal plumbing. They can track the movement of magma, monitor pressure changes, and identify areas of increased activity. This constant vigilance is crucial for understanding the volcano's behavior and providing early warning of any potential hazards. Earthquakes are a constant companion to volcanic activity. As magma pushes against the Earth's crust, it strains and deforms the surrounding rock. This stress builds up over time, eventually exceeding the strength of the rock and causing it to fracture. This sudden release of energy is what we experience as an earthquake. Yellowstone is no stranger to earthquakes. Thousands of tremors shake the park each year. Most are too small to be felt, but occasionally, larger earthquakes occur. The 1959 Hebgen Lake earthquake with a magnitude of 7.3 was a stark reminder of the powerful forces at play beneath Yellowstone. While most earthquakes at Yellowstone are caused by tectonic plate movement, some are directly linked to volcanic activity. Magma intruding into new fractures or pressure changes within the magma chamber can trigger earthquake swarms. These swarms, characterized by numerous earthquakes occurring over a short period, can be a precursor to an eruption. Scientists carefully monitor earthquake patterns at Yellowstone, looking for changes in frequency, magnitude, and location. An increase in earthquake activity, particularly in areas of known magma movement, could signal an increased risk of eruption. The term supervolcano evokes images of apocalyptic destruction, but what exactly constitutes a supervolcano? And is Yellowstone truly deserving of this ominous title? The answer lies in the sheer scale of its past eruptions. A supervolcano is defined by its ability to produce an eruption of magnitude 8 or higher on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI. This means ejecting over 240 cubic miles of volcanic material in a single event. To put that in perspective, the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, a cataclysmic event in its own right, only ejected 0.24 cubic miles of material. Yellowstone has experienced three super eruptions in its history, earning its place among the most powerful volcanic systems on Earth. These eruptions were not mere explosions. They were cataclysmic events that reshaped continents and altered global climate patterns. While the term supervolcano might seem sensationalized, it accurately reflects the immense power and potential consequences of a Yellowstone eruption. Understanding the science behind these events is crucial for separating fact from fiction and assessing the true risks posed by this sleeping giant. A super eruption at Yellowstone would be a global event. Its impact would be felt far beyond the borders of the United States, the immediate effects would be devastating but the long-term consequences would be even more far-reaching. Ashfall is one of the most significant hazards. Fine volcanic ash carried by prevailing winds could blanket much of North America. This ash would disrupt air travel, damage crops, contaminate water supplies, and pose serious respiratory hazards. The eruption would also release massive amounts of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. This gas, combining with water vapor, would form sulfate aerosols that reflect sunlight back into space. The result would be a global cooling effect, potentially triggering a volcanic winter. Economic disruption would be widespread. Agriculture, transportation, and trade would be severely impacted. 
The global interconnectedness of our modern world means that the ripple effects of a Yellowstone eruption would be felt in every corner of the planet. The question of when, or even if, Yellowstone will erupt again is a source of much debate and uncertainty. While scientists have made significant strides in understanding volcanic systems, predicting eruptions with certainty remains elusive. The Earth works on its own timescale, often defying our attempts to impose order on its chaotic nature. Despite the uncertainties one thing is clear, Yellowstone is an active volcanic system and the potential for future eruptions both large and small, is very real. This knowledge should not be a cause for panic but rather a call for preparedness and informed decision making. Living with a sleeping giant like Yellowstone requires a balance of respect and vigilance. We must respect the immense power of nature while remaining vigilant in our efforts to understand and monitor its behavior. By investing in scientific research, developing early warning systems and educating the public, we can mitigate the risks and ensure that future generations continue to marvel at the awe-inspiring beauty of Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone is a paradox, a place of serene beauty and untamed power. Its geysers and hot springs, fueled by the same forces that drive volcanic eruptions, are a constant reminder of the delicate balance between creation and destruction. As we look to the future, the legacy of Yellowstone will be one of both awe and apprehension. The awe stems from the sheer scale and grandeur of the park. Its geothermal features, diverse wildlife and pristine landscapes are a testament to the power and beauty of the natural world. Yellowstone reminds us that we are but temporary stewards of this planet, entrusted with its care for future generations. The apprehension arises from the knowledge that beneath this beauty lies a sleeping giant, a supervolcano capable of unleashing unimaginable destruction. The uncertainty surrounding Yellowstone's future is a constant reminder of our vulnerability to the forces of nature. Yet this apprehension should not overshadow our appreciation for this unique and awe-inspiring place. Instead, it should inspire us to learn from the past, prepare for the future, and approach the natural world with both respect and humility. For in the end, it is our understanding and respect for nature that will determine our fate, not just as a species, but as a planet.